Yeah, when, when I look at it, first, we've been ensuring that our Novartis associates in China have the, the right protections in place, and I think we've taken the right steps. I would also say our global supply chain, we've done a, a careful evaluation of our ability to continue to uh, deliver medicines to patients uh, from our uh, supply chains in China as well as globally, and we feel very comfortable with where we are. So we don't see any disruptions for, for the coming months, and we'll continue, of course, to monitor that. I think more broadly, we just have to keep understanding the epidemiology of this of this virus, really understand the overall uh, transmission rate, case fatality rate. I think a lot of data is now coming out, and some great publications as well, and some medical journals really trying to understand this virus. The reality is it will take over a year, in my expectation, to really find a, a new vaccine for this. So we need to really use epidemiological controls to, to really get this uh, situation in a better place. It feels like these kinds of things keep happening. We had H1N1 not so long ago. Now we have the coronavirus here. We had the swine flu. Uh, um, is there something that the pharma industry should be doing in terms of antiviral work to try to get ahead of viruses like this or at least be more prepared to deal with them? Yeah, I had the opportunity to work on this for many, many years. And one of the challenges is when these epidemics happen or these situations happen, there's a lot of interest and there's a lot of activity. But then we go back to a place where they're not happening anymore and everyone kind of loses interest and the investment then flows out. So the question is, how do you keep the investment in place uh, in the troughs of interest in uh, pandemics and, and these kinds of uh, outbreaks? That's a challenge. There is an organization called CEPI that's working on this to with the pharmaceutical industry, bringing the various uh, parties together. But it's a challenge to maintain that funding. I think continue to believe governments need to maintain high levels of preparedness regardless of whether we have one of these outbreaks or not. That continues to be a challenge, and we need to just take it really seriously. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.